Hello friends, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and Helsinki on a snowy day. I'm back with another video and this time we will be taking a look at the MedDuck MD82 for a second time after it received couple updates. I keep trying to find some time to record more videos but with the constraints I have given it's becoming a little bit of a challenge and I'll try to keep up uh, and at least try to publish one video per week. I hope everybody is doing okay and doing fine. What we will do is we will start cold and dark and we'll carry out a full flight with offline ATC provided by pilot to ATC. I hope you guys enjoy the video and uh, maybe I I will be able to answer a couple of your, your questions. Speaking of which, if you do have any, please feel free to uh, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Without further ado, let's talk about what we are going to do. As I said, we are cold and dark, jetway is not connected because now we need to jump into the cockpit and fuel the aircraft first and then we will be able to board the passengers. We are going to use GSX and we'll try to carry out a realistic flight as much as possible. Here we are in the cockpit of MD-82. As you see here everything is cold and dark and we'll start with turning on the EFB and taking a look at our flight plan to see how much fuel we need. When you go to weight and balance, you'll see an import operational flight plan, plan button. If you are missing this, it is more likely that the setting in the load manager, that app that you can run in the background where you install deliveries, has a setting under its setting says use Simbri for fuel and flight planning or something around those lines. So if you are missing this, that is most likely why you don't have this option. Check that box and you will be able to download your SimBrief flight plan, put it into your documents, MedDoc and routes, and then you will be able to load your flight plan. So for our flight, we are going to fly from Helsinki to Oslo, Garden Moon. Garden Moon. We will load that flight plan and it looks like we will need 8,282 kilograms of fuel. We take a look at the aircraft services which glitches a little bit as you have seen the numbers and they, they all disappeared but this is synchronizing with GSX because there was a new option after the update saying synchronize the services with GSX and that's what we are going to do we'll bring up the GSX menu why I'm not sure why I have to click it twice but it is what it is and we will request refueling Refueling truck is on its way so the truck will come and I'll Please bring you don't guys load back. aircraft until the fuel truck arrives and ask to do it. As you heard, we don't have to do anything until the fuel truck arrives, so let's wait for it. Alright, looks like the fuel truck is here. We do have an underground fueling bay over here, but unfortunately fuel this is not that is type of truck. And it's missing the fuel transfer the hoses the fuel truck. that connects to the aircraft to the and it starts fuel the quantity. fueling immediately. That's because it's sinking with the mad dog. As you see, we are taking fuel right now and we will need quite a bit more. And after the fueling is done, we will start powering the aircraft. All right. Refueling is almost done and we should see the fuel truck leaving. There he goes. He will run through the aircraft, of course, thanks to GSX. Very nice. Now we cannot fly because you damaged the aircraft. Anyway, we will jump into the cockpit and carry out with the startup procedure. It's quite cold outside. We have GPU connected, but we will probably end up running the APU to warm up the cabin but let's go to the overhead and turn the battery power on. Before doing so we need to check a couple things. Uh, make sure the fuel pumps are off, wiper is in the off position, pedo heat, anti-ice switches are in the off position, landing gear is down, speed brakes are stalled, 
flaps are retracted, radar radar is off, and that is pretty much it to power the aircraft. Let's check the battery voltages now. Alright, that's reading, one of the batteries is reading 26, and the battery amps are showing no discharge, so we can safely turn on the battery power. One click and two clicks to lock it in place. As I said, we have GPU power, we'll make use of that right now, but we will eventually start the APU. The reason I'm saying that is if we check the cabin temperature after turning the external power, Autopilot. it's quite cold, 4 degrees Celsius. So it makes sense to start the APU. We we'll put the start pump to on and then we will put the APU master to run and then start. Hold it there a couple seconds until we see the RPM gauge moving. And then we will release the switch. There we go. Now APU is starting and hopefully we will be able to warm up the cabin for boarding. While it's starting up, let's set our flight recorder. For the date, today is January 15th. Our flight number is 0917. And this is the first flight of the day. So now that's set, APU is starting. We will carry out the rest of the startup. So APU power available. We'll put the APU on the bus. We'll disconnect the GPU from the bus and call GSX and dismiss the GPU. Again, I have to click twice. Additional services, dismiss GPU. Now it's taken care of and we can carry out the rest of the startup procedure and then we'll start boarding the passengers and then program our flight so that we don't have to spend too much time at the gate. Alright, let's do this and then go over the checklist. We'll put the galley power on, we'll see the AC load, start pump can come off now, emergency lights to arm, and we will do it from top to bottom, red to right. So we'll start here, nothing to worry over here, circuit breakers are in, we'll test the fire loops. Make sure they are operating correctly and we'll also do a cargo fire test. They are all working. We can put some panel lights and then move to the lower overhead. And we'll start here. Electrical power, everything looks normal. We can set this to APU so that we see the APU and how much its voltage is generating and the amps as well. Uh, AC loads are looking normal. Over here, we don't have to do anything, APU is on the bus. Uh, we can turn the APU over air on, it has been running for a while now. I don't know if we really need to wait 4 minutes. And that's how it is in the real life. Engine starter panel, fuel tanks are off, starter switches are guarded, and the starter system is in the off position, start pump is off, fuel heat. I don't think we will need it. Emergency lights armed, we refueled so we can turn the seat belt signs on because we will be boarding the passengers. Over here in the ice protection, we'll turn the windshield heat to on. And we'll come over here, we have done this already. We can ask the crew to and emergency light test. And test the emergency lights. Emergency lights on. Emergency lights armed. We'll do a stall test. Alright, it's working. We'll do a max speed warning test. And we'll do an ice test. All systems are working. Alright, cabin temperature is still not good because we haven't turned the APU air on yet. Uh, we will. Oh, we have. Okay, we see the pneumatic pressure, but we haven't turned the crossfield valves. The pneumatic crossfield valves are now on. We can go back to the overhead and put the supply 
switches to auto one by one and increase the temperature from auto to hot as well as the cockpit so that we can start warming up the, the cabin and the cockpit over here at the pressurization panel we'll move the selector switch to from standby to to uh, I'm sorry, from primary to standby and back to primary and then click lights should be off now and the landing pressure according to our operational flight plan and the current METAR the QNH is 9077 at our destination airport so we will set that 9077 that's roughly about that and the landing elevation is 300 680 feet so we will round it up to 700 and set that on our pressurization panel that is now done we can do an enunciation and lights test everything is looking okay and when the cabin warms we can start the boarding we'll come down here we'll set the QNH later we'll uncage the artificial horizon or the standby artificial horizon and we will go down to the FMS position initialization we are at Helsinki Echo Foxtrot Hotel Kilo we are currently parked at gate 16 and this is the GNS position we'll plug it in here and we'll go to the route as I said, we have ATC. We will plan the route, but we will first start with asking clearance and getting our departure clearance. And we will set the altimeters too. So the ATIS frequency is 135.7, 135.07, my bad. That should give us the ATIS information. Vantag information November. There we go. 20 Zulu winds are 151 at 19 or knots. Visibility 6 miles in light rain. 1000 few clouds. 1200. We will listen to the ADIS and set our QNH. 1600 broken. Temperature 3, dew point 1. Current QNH is 9 or 86. 9 or 86. So we will set the QNH to 9 or 86. Vantag information November. 420 Zulu winds are 151 at 19 or knots. Visibility 6 miles in light. That range. should do it. Let's switch out of the frequency. And then we will do the same over here. 9 or 86. That should set all our altimeters. Uh, to be honest, the sim is thinking it's 9 or 8, 7, but we will set 9 or 8, 6, and the airport elevation should be around 160 feet, so that checks. Alright, so altimeters are set, temperature is 3 degrees, and we can carry out and call our clearance. So the clearance delivery frequency is 121.8. decimal eight. information November. Momentarily we will winds are one switch. five one at one nine or knots. Visibility six miles in light rate. One thousand few clouds. One thousand okay. two hundred. That should be it. And we'll see. Finair nine or one seven. Radio check please. We are on the frequency. I'm not sure we are being if we are being heard, but we will see it here in a second. In air nine or one seven, radio check, please. Let's try this one more time when the radio is silenced. In there, holding alpha one, confirm. 
Alpha 2. Correct, holding position is Alpha 2. Alpha 2, thank you. Ready at 3, 4, 7. Finnair 917, radio check please. Finnair 917, you are loud and clear. Okay. Finnair 917, ready to copy IFR to Oslo. Finnair 917 is cleared to Echo November Golf Mike. Climb via the Adiv 4D departure with the Adivo transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 15. Climb to flight level 060 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 3 minutes after departure. Approach on 124 decimal 32. Squawk 3022. Finnair 917 is cleared to Echo November Golf Mike. Climb via the ADIV 40 departure, with the Adivo transition, then as filed. Climb to flight level 060 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 3 minutes after departure. Approach on 124 decimal 32. Squawk 3022. Finnair Niner 17 Redback correct. QNH is Niner 86 let us know when you're ready for pushback. QNH is Niner 86 Finnair Niner 17. All right, we have received our clearance. Let's break this down. What I did was I entered our departure. Our destination is Echo November Golf Mike. We, in. we are cleared to 6,000 feet, which is set, and we will arm it. When we turn on the flight directors, we'll pull the switch and it will be armed. We can get some lights over here too. And then we set our squawk code and we read back the clearance instructions and we are ready to carry out the rest of our uh, flight planning. Let me tune out of that frequency for silence and we will come back when we are ready to ask for pushback. Alright, from Adivo, according to our flight plan routing, we are taking Yankee 365 Airway. And that will take us to Pogok, Papa Oscar Golf Oscar Kilo. From Pogok, we are going direct to Eburi, Echo Bravo Uniform, Romeo, India. And from Eburi, we are taking November 623. And that will take us to Esiba, Echo Sierra, Echo Bravo Alpha. From Esiba, that's our departure arrival. My bad. We'll go to the departures arrivals page, select arrival, and we will do an ILS to run me 01 light. 01 left, not right, I'm sorry. Via the Esiba for Lima arrival with an in suit transition. That is the routing we are expecting. If this changes or if ATC changes it, we will adjust and change this accordingly. Let's go back to the routes page and activate the route and execute. Let's go to the legs and make sure we don't have any discontinuity, which we don't. Looks like something has changed. Maybe weather, maybe something. This transitions in the sim sometimes drives me crazy. All right, so that's our oh, routing entered into the box. Uh, the cabin temperature is good enough, so now we can request boarding and carry out for the rest. Let's call the GSX menu one more time by clicking twice, I don't know why, and let's request boarding. boarding. Requested. So the jetway will connect, it's a funky connection, I'm telling you. And we will go and turn the aircraft services page and open our cargo doors. That should start the boarding process. We should see it here. It's blue, that means it's in effect and we can carry out with the rest. Alright, so our performance calculation is next. We will go over to the performance page. Is it asking us to open the door? Let's open the door. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you aboard. Federal regulations require that carry-on items... Okay, the door is open. 
to do the performance. I call Foxtrot Hotel Kilo. Enter that. We will be departing runway 15 per ATC. Runway condition is not dry with snow on the ground, so we will select good medium. Wind information, we have listened to the 80s, but I don't remember. But it is showing 160 at 17 knots on the meta report. And if we are really curious, we can also check the weather information here as well. 160 at 19, so that's close. We will keep that. Temperature was 3 degrees. Altimeter 9 or 86. Anti-ice, we will probably turn it on. Our takeoff weight, if we check the weights and balances, 51, uh, 59,000 kilograms. So we will enter that into the box and round it up because it was 5909. So we will do 59,100. And we'll hit calculate. That will give us a flap setting of 5.5. Keep this, remember this. And our takeoff CG is 14.3. So if we go down, we have a CG setting here. We will set this to 14.3, roughly. So that's 13, 14. I think that's close enough. And then the flap setting will be 5.5. That's once. And we have another flight flap setting over here. We will set this to 5.5 as well. So this will set our flaps the other side will set our uh, stabilizer we will turn the transfer and auxiliary hydraulic pumps to on because we will need that and we will carry out with the rest flight directors are on uh, what are our speeds we need to enter them into the box before continuing so 130 144 153 and flex 50 Let's go into the box, performance initialization, our fuel on board, we can see here 8.25, we will enter that into the box, we are expecting a normal burn, that's here, zero fuel weight is, uh, that was, I believe, 81.9, Eighty one point one. Okay, we will round it up. Eighty one one. Eighty nine. Eighty one one. No, not either one. Fifty one one. What I'm saying here? Am I reading this correctly? Wait a minute. Fifty one nine. Fifty one one. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So fifty one point one. Reserves two point eight. We will leave the coast index as is. Our cruising altitude is flight level 360. We will enter that into the box. Cruise wind will take it from our top of climb on our operational flight plan. 225 at 44 knots. 225. Max flight level 343. Okay, we need to think about this. Let's just not worry about it for now. 225. 44 we are looking for an ISO deviation of 3 degrees so we will plug it in here and that should give us minus 54 degrees which is what we have on our operational flight plan so the cruising altitude obviously is not suitable for us with the current load instead of 360 we will do 340 and that should be okay Looks like it is. Um, we will also change this in our ATC software so that we we can make that work. All right, that's that. Takeoff speeds. I remember one three three, one four four, and one five three. Let's see if my memory serves me well go over to the performance again 130, 144, 153 I was off a little bit so let's fix this and correct 
And that's our VSPs. We can also bring the placard by clicking here. That is close. That's fine. Our V2 is 153. We will bug it. 153. And set the bugs. And we'll carry on with the rest of the checklist. MCDU is set up. Route is entered. Departure seed. Arrival star. They are done. We have requested clearance. Parking brake is set. Instrument and panel lighting as required. We have some. We can get some over here as well. Also to the pedestal just a little bit more. That is done. We will carry out. Nothing over on the engine instruments yet. We will turn the ART off, take off flex and we'll set our flex temperature of 50 degrees here. That is now set. We also over here while we are looking at this we have to set our gross weight or zero fuel weight which was 51.1 so we'll go and set it to 51.100 that's a little bit too much 51.100 set and that should give us a correct gross weight of 59.3 that I believe is close 59.100 so that is within the margin and I'm okay with it so that is now done uh, if you care you can check the oxygen to make sure it is working on both sides uh, pedestal is set QNH is in the box uh, not QNH uh, squawker is in the in the box and pneumatic cross speed valves are on and we will set our trim we will match these two closely that should give us the trim setting that we need and we'll go and check anything else we missed all right that's done light directors are on we can test the auto land mode by pressing here in case we need to use it uh, but we need to set the radios for that so I'm not planning to use it, let's just sk skip that. Uh, Nav radios, we don't use any VORs. Speed, heading bug, yes, we need to set the heading bug to runway QDM for runway 15. It is 144, so we'll set the heading bug to 144. It is set now. Altitude is selected and armed, speed bugs are set, uncage the horizon, altimeters are set, clock is checked. We have 15 minutes to our departure, I believe. Uh, ART is set, fuel quantity is set, zero fuel weight is set, weather radar is off, ATC is set. Now we are ready for pushback. When the boarding is complete so let's see where we are at with the boarding 130 passengers cargo is almost on board not sure why we are not receiving any more passengers this seems to happen with the mad dog using gsx but we will ignore it and we will assume that the boarding is complete hopefully We will request our pushback clearance. Did we miss anything over here? No, we did not. Everything looks okay. We can close the cockpit door now. And take a look. Right, nothing to worry here. Everything looks normal. And Alright, looks like boarding is complete. We received a chime. Mm. 
Yeah, the passengers are causing an issue here. We'll see if we can. Okay, they are now boarded. Good. So we now put the EFB to flight mode because we are not going to need it anymore. And we can now request our pushback clearance from the ATC. Let's tune back into the frequency. Let's put it to one. Take a moment to review the safety instruction card and receive by pocket. Passenger seated. Pre-Nair 9 ready for pushback and engine start. Pre-Nair 9 pushback and engine start approved. Pushback and engine start approved. Pre-Nair 9 one We received our clearance, so let's turn our fuel pumps to on. Bring the GSX menu to request the pushback. Because it will take some time for them to connect. It will also come over here, we'll turn the anti collision light to on to state that we are getting ready to start the engines. Unguard the starter switches and put it to system B. Start pump goes to on again. We are ready for pushback. And we will momentarily turn off the packs for engine start. Alright, engine start. Let's go over the check checklist. Parking brake is set, auxiliary hydro hydraulic pan pump is on. Trims are set, stabilizer and takeoff. Yeah. Selectors are set, air conditioning is off, fuel pumps are on, ignition selector on system E. Anti-collision light is on, ATC clearance is re received and we will carry out with the engine start we will be pushing the tail to the right a tail to the left nose to the right and that should happen very shortly okay. we haven't tested the fire loops and i'm not sure why the bell is not sounding i'm probably missing something here But let's not worry about it. Okay, what we said, tail to the left, nose to the right. Release parking brakes. Okay, parking brakes are released. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at wheel. Engines are clear to start. We will start with the right engine. Put it to on. And we are watching the M1, N2 when it reaches about 20% or when it passes 20% we will introduce fuel we are also seeing fuel pressure increasing fuel temp uh, fuel, not fuel pressure, oil pressure increasing oil temperature is not increasing just yet because we don't have any ignition past 20% introducing fuel we should see light off there we go and then we should see oil temperature increasing and M1 rotation starter switch will cut off very shortly, and we can continue with the left engine. That's the sound, starter switch is off, we can bar the switch and start engine 1 or left engine. And we'll monitor the same thing. And 2 rotation, oil pressure. Um, coming up to 20%. Past 20, fuel is going in. Light off. And oil temperature. M1 rotation. And that's a good engine start. Started will cut off shortly. Parking brakes are set. We can now confirm that we had a good engine start. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. And that is now turned off. And we can turn the packs back to on one by one. Right. We don't need APU air anymore, we can turn it off, we can turn off the APU master. 
All right. Now, after start checks, APU bus switches to off. Yes, we don't need them anymore. Air condition supply to auto. APU air switch off. APU master switch off. Ignition selector off. Pedostatic heaters to captain. That's done. Engine air for anti ice and fuel heaters. We will probably need it, so we will turn it on. Stack pump can go off, fuel heat can come on. <laughs> Alright. Hydraulic auxiliary hydraulic pump can now turn off and transfers to off. That transfer is kind of a PTU. Uh, windows, doors, locks and closed. Pneumatic cross feed wells to off. That is done. And we can now arm our spoilers. Set our flaps. Let's see here. Tampering, disabling, or destroying the lavatory smoke detector is prohibited by law. On behalf of the flight crew, welcome aboard. Okay, that should do. We should see a TO eliminated over here when we are at the correct flap setting, which it did. So we are ready to request our taxi clearance from the ATC. We will keep the legs page over here and we will keep the takeoff or these speeds over here. There is a master caution, airfoil anti-ice pressure abnormal. That's probably due to us having the packs on, so let's see if that fixes the problem. No, maybe we are not generating enough bleed air because the engines are in idle. We'll keep an eye on that, but we can clear the master caution now. And we are ready to request our tax clearance. Finnair 9R17 ready to taxi. Finnair 9R17 taxi to runway 15 via taxiways Yankee, Yankee Bravo, hold short runway 15. Taxi to runway 15 via taxiways Yankee, Yankee Bravo, hold short runway 15 Finnair 9R17. Alright. We should make a sharp right turn. I'm not sure if we can get to. Alright, we will take a right turn from here to the taxiway and then we will follow that taxiway. That's the taxi routing. Nose lights goes to dim for the taxi, transponder to altitude reporting off. And the last thing is the auto brakes to take off or reject, reject the take off and arm. And that should be it. Alright, parking brake disengaged. And we'll give her just a little bit of throttle. And we should get moving. There we go. Now, the snow in Microsoft Flight Simulator is like blue. Let's test our brakes. Brakes are working fine. We have seen the pressure drop right there. And we can do a flight controls check while we are taxiing. Pull forward, pull back, pull left, pull right. Right rudder, center, left rudder, center. Alright, everything is working now. And we can safely taxi to the runway. Alright, we are a little bit slow though, but we will take this next exit to the taxiway. That should get us on the correct taxiway and we will carry along. So that's Yankee. 
it was selling Alpha Bravo, but we were past Alpha Bravo. We are at Alpha, Alpha Charlie, Charlie, so that was Destroy not possible for us to get to Alpha Bravo. Bravo. That is we'll sometimes a problem Alpha with the when Alpha using Charlie. pilot to ATC, but we should be fine after taking this turn into the taxiway, Yankee. So we will take this and immediately take a Alpha left Charlie. turn to join to Yankee. All right, that should be Taxiway Yankee. And we will carry out like this. Looks like we are going to cross a runway, but that runway is not in use. There is an aircraft taking off on the runway, and we should be number two. Let's call the cabin. Ladies and gentlemen, we're number one for takeoff. Flight attendants, one. please be seated. Now the flight attendants will be taking their seats. And everything else is looking good. Alright, we are still seeing that. Air coil, ice pressure, abnormal. Maybe that's a failure that I'm not aware of that happened. Okay, we will be crossing this runway, even if it's not active. We should probably turn our strobe lights on for visibility. We are passing or crossing runway 04 right and 04 left. Or 04 right rather. And after here, next turn should be our takeoff runway. Alright, we crossed runway 04 right. Let's turn the strobes back to off. We will roll like this until we reach to our departure runway. When we are holding short, we can carry out the before takeoff checklist and quest departure clearance and be on our way. All right, almost there. Next right turn should take us to runway 15 and we will stop at the hold short point. Thin Air 9017 contact tower on 118.85. Have okay, a good afternoon. Tower tower on After doing the before takeoff checks, let's stop here. It's a little bit closer than I like, but so be it. Parking brakes set. And before takeoff check checklist: engine ignition selector to both. Um, engine airfoil, anti-ice, and fuel heaters are on. Flaps are set for takeoff and confirmed. Auxiliary hydraulic and transfer pumps to on for takeoff. An initiator panel, rudder travel unrestricted, engine anti ice on, and ART in up. That's checked. And we can now request our departure clearance. Tower, good morning. Finair 917, ready for departure. Thin Air Niner 17 winds are 151 at 21 knots cleared for takeoff, runway 15 squawk 4266. Cleared for takeoff, runway 15 squawking 4266 Thin Air Niner 17. We have a change in squawk code, that's fine. We are now squawking 4266, transponder to TARA, nose lights and landing lights on, nose light to bright. We'll turn the strobes on as well, and we will go ahead and line up after turning on our radar radar. Radar radar turned on, terrain on ND, let's clear the yoke, drop the range a little bit to like 5 miles so that we can see a little bit better, the brake is off, and off we go. Kilometer 6, 
Uh, why are we not moving? Okay, now we are. Sometimes snow makes it harder to move, but now we are rolling. And we will line up, hold the brakes, and do our takeoff run. From now on, our co pilot should take care of the communications with the ATC. Hopefully, we will not worry about those. Let's stop here. What we will do is we will increase the throttles up until 1.4 EPR and arm the auto throttles. But before doing so, we will activate the takeoff mode by pressing this button, one of these, that will put the auto throttle or the flight directors to takeoff mode. And that should be our takeoff roll. And we will rotate at 144, increasing the throttle slowly. Placing the brakes now, maintaining the center line. EPR should catch off very shortly, 1.4, auto throttle goes in, and takeoff thrust should be set. Checked. Maintain the center line. 80 knots, cross check. Checked. Coming up to our V1. V1. And coming up to our rotation speed. Rotate. Alright, we will pitch up to 20 degrees. As the rate gear is coming up, we will pitch just a little bit more to get her up in the air and climb. Gear up, lights out. Alright, gear is up. Lights are out, checked. Now we are up in the air. We have a traffic warning. We will put nav and climb mode on the climb ERT, thrust climb thrust is set, and we'll go back to now hopefully, increase the speed to 220 knots, Thin contact Helsinki approach on 124 turn. approach on 124.32, let's maintain, A pitch altitude or nose up attitude, we don't need to drop or lose altitude. Finnair right, 917, good afternoon. Radar let's contact. Stuttering here. Finnair 917, climb and maintain flight level 060. Climb and maintain flight level 060, Finnair 917. Alright, we can select nav, we nav, and autopilot can go in. We can bring the flaps and slats in now. Flap zero. And we will set the speed to 220 because we have a restriction as far as I remember. Alright, uh, we are good to go. We are leaving Helsinki and on our way to Oslo. Look at that. A little bit of FPS problem here. But we should be fine. Let's go down to the FMC, bring up the legs page and take a look at our departure chart. Any restrictions? Finnair yes, 917, have. you have traffic at 3 o'clock 10 miles at 2500 feet. 
Finnair 9017 climb to flight level 140 contact Tampere center on 121.3. Enjoy your afternoon. Engage me again. Climb to flight level 140 center on 121.3. Take care Finnair 9017. Okay, we can contact the center now or the co-pilot will do it for us. Center Finnair 9017 climbing to flight level 140. Finnair 9017, good afternoon. Alright, after takeoff tech checklist. TRC is at climb. Okay, ART is set to auto. Flaps and slats are retracted. Speed brakes are disarmed. Um, auto brakes off. Hydraulic and transfer pumps can come off now um, engine hydraulic pumps on low they should be over here by the way this can go also off as well engine and hydraulic pumps are on low verified center fuel pumps are off there are there is no fuel ignition selector to off airfoil anti-ice and fuel heaters we probably don't need them anymore so we can turn them off now and the fuel heaters as well oh they were already off anyway that's all right um, terrain can come off now we can now focus on the weather Synchronize our heading bug one more time for our current heading. Uh, TCAS is checked. Altimeters we passed 6000. We should move to standard. We are coming up to 10,000. We will turn off the landing and nose lights. Almost there, we can now turn off our landing lights and we'll check the pressurization system to make sure it's working, which it is, and that's about it until we reach the cruise after takeoff checklist completed. We passed about 10,000, we cleared the 250 restrictions, so we are good to climb more and reach to our cruising altitude, hopefully. So that's the takeoff, guys. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, we will carry on and I'll bring you guys back when we are at cruise. Alright friends, we have reached our cruise level. We are at 34,000 feet. We have level. And we have a couple things to do. We'll put the ART to cruise mode. And we'll continue with the cruise checklist. TRC is set to cruise, ART is verified to be on auto, speed selector is at cruise speed, fuel pumps, center fuel pumps are off, we don't have any fuel, Egnin initial selector is still off, anti-ice is off, passenger signs are off, and initiator panel is checked, ATC is on, cabin pressure is checked as well, and it is showing zero climb, and a delta for the difference so we have a couple things to do first thing we'll go over to the descent page on the FMC and we'll enter our descent forecast according to our operational flight plan descent winds are as follows 310 flight level 310 winds are coming from 247 at 34 31 Nuts. Flight level 200 means I'm coming from 248 at 46 knots. Flight level 150 means I'm coming from 251 at 38. And finally, flight level 100. Finnair 9017 contact Malmo control on 118 decimal zero. Enjoy your afternoon. Center on 118 decimal zero. Finnair 9017. 
Now transfer to center, so that's now set. We we'll go back Finnair to the next page. Finnair 9 or 17, good afternoon. We will bring up the Navigraph charts and take a look at our arrival chart. While we are cruising, we have a couple things to change in our FMS. Let's go and pull our arrival. Let's show the chart. It should be somewhere over here. There we go. And as you see, we have a couple of restrictions at Eceba, Idamo, and we need to verify that the FMC has those as well. So, next page. Eceba, 285, flight level 18158. So, that's not correct. So, let's correct this 250 at flight level. 158. It like this in here. Oh, not there. That's the wrong spot. 250 at light level 158. That goes to Eceba. And then Idamo is 250. That's correct. And then 220. Execute this, and that should take care of our speed. One final thing we need to do is go to the approach page and verify our information. Final approach course is 012, ILS frequency is 110.3, and reference speed is 127. If we go over here, laps 40 we will be landing at. Approach speed is 132, landing speed is 127. That checks. Let's go ahead and tune our LS frequency, 110, decimal 3, on both sides, decimal 3, final approach course is 12, we set that on our course window here, on both sides again, that is now set and verified. And you can go back to the legs page. According to our progress page, we have 145 miles to top of descent. We'll see if ATC instructs us to descend early. These messages, by the way, are normal as we tune the frequency. They are showing fail as we are not receiving the AA signal just yet. Other than this, all we need to do now is to cruise until we reach to our top of descent. Welcome back friends, we are getting close to our top of descent point and we are waiting on ATC to instruct us for our descent instructions and our arrival. While we are waiting on the ATC, we can use this time to calculate a couple things and get the aircraft ready. First thing is to go to the performance page and calculate our landing performance. We will be landing to Gardermoen, Gardermoen in Oslo. We are expecting a good medium runway condition. We will be landing to runway 01 left with flaps 15 to 40 setting. Current QNH is. Let me see the QNH real quick. Current QNH is 9083. We'll enter that here. Outside air temperature at Oslo is 0 degrees Celsius, and the winds are 110 at 9 knots. That is all set. We will use reversers and auto brakes will be medium. Landing weight, if we take a look at our gross weight right now, maybe this is better. We have 55.4 tons and we are expecting to land with 4.1 tons of fuel, so that's 750 difference. If we take, if we take 750 from 55,450, uh, it's changed a little bit, so... 700 now that will give us 
54700. So we will put 54700 here and hit calculate. Now we will be landing the distance is 2.2 kilometers and runway is long enough to accommodate that so we should be safe with medium brakes and we have the flaps up speed of 224 uh, slats 175 and 15 152 and VREF of 129 we will add 5 to that that will be our approach speed which is 134 when we have this calculated we can also look at the landing placard to see if it aligns it kind of not quite so in air 917 expect the SEB 4 Lima arrival with the SEBA transition for the ILS approach to runway 01 left with the ensued transition at Garter Moon expect the ESCB 4 Lima arrival with the SEBA transition for the ILS approach to runway 01 left with the of transition fin air 917 all right, looks like we uh, received the uh, arrival we hoped for, so we, need, we don't need to make any changes. And while the ATC was talking with us, I have clicked here to set the speed box to our ref speeds. Uh, that is 226, I believe. Looks like it. And then once, oh no, that's actually coming from here. 224, 175, 152, and 129. -er. So our speed bags are set, and we are just waiting for instructions from ATC to start our descent. That should happen shortly, and we will set the altitude, but we can use the remainder of the time to go through the descent checklist. Minimum sector altitude is checked, it's 3900 feet and we will be eventually descending to 4000. But we can take a look at the chart just to see it. We have already looked at the arrival and set our speeds for our restrictions. We will pull the ILS. Hopefully it will show here. Uh, minimum sector altitude is 3900 as seen here we will eventually descend down to 4000 uh, mandatory 220 at INSU and then 3500 uh, we have already tuned the ILS frequency and the final approach course missed approach altitude is 5000 we have to remember this and what else we can do we can set the decision height which is for our arrival it is going to be let me see it on the other screen um, it says one two two and the other chart I have on the other screen with the updated Navigraph app shows three seven three so we will use three seven three just to be on the safe side I'm not sure why the in-game charts panel is giving us a different a decision hate but so be it we will press here and then we will set it to 373 this is gonna take a while hopefully not too long and we should be receiving our descent instructions very shortly okay 373 is set and Approach and landing briefing, we have confirmed it, we will eventually descend down to 3500, slow the aircraft down to 220 knots, and before our initial fix into, we will open the speed window and keep slowing the aircraft to extend the slats and then flaps, and control the speed manually after that. We have a 10,000 hard restriction for a couple waypoints. We will wait until we clear those restrictions and then we will start descending. Finair 917 descend to cross SEBA at flight level 190 then descend via the SEB 4 Lima arrival with the SEBA transition to cross in SUV at or above flight level 050 QNH is 983 at Garter Moon. 
descent via the ESC before Lima arrival with the S of a transition to cross INSEF at or above flight level 050 QNH is 9 or 83 thin air 9 or 17. Alright, we will arm the altitude and to start our descent, we will go to the descent page here. And we can also hit the VNI, that should initiate the descent. There we go, we now descend. Now we started descending, but we have a different instruction to pass the Aceba at flight level 190 from ATC. We are currently planning to pass at 15, flight level 152, so let's fix that. 250 at flight level 190. That is the second correction we had to make here. And then that will recalculate the altitudes and we can execute this. So now the aircraft should cross Aceba at 190 and we should be fine because we have a hard restriction of 10,000 so that's not going anywhere and by the time we reach there we should be fine on the VNA profile. Right now it's showing that we are below the profile. Oh what was that? Oh, I hate when the weather changes cause this looks like we are going to enter the cloud so it might be a good idea to turn the engine into ice back on and we will keep descending like this and i will bring you guys back when we are ready to clear that 10,000 restriction to discuss the rest of our plan to land to Gardermoor in oslo welcome back friends we are getting to 10,000 and the weather turned out to be very ugly. This will make an interesting landing. Let's hop into the cockpit and see what else we need to do. Alright, so 12,000 feet coming down, uh, passing 10,000, we will turn the landing lights on. But as you will see in the weather radar, the weather is quite nasty. It's raining, we have anti-ice systems on. And we can use some floodlights to brighten up the cockpit a little bit. And that should give us what we need. We can also maybe get some floodlights to the pedestal. At least for more visibility in the cockpit. Thin air 9 or 17 slow to 250 knots or less. Alright, we need to use some speed brakes and slow down to 220 to help aircraft slow down I'm extending the speed brakes to get below, two, to get below 250 and ready for 220 and we should level at 10,000 and that should help us with the speed we will keep VNAV for now until we clear that restriction Okay, that's roughly 220, we are making the turn, and that's a hard restriction, we need to maintain that. Let's bring the legs page here, as you see 10,000 for a while, we can synchronize our heading. We can also set the auto brakes to remind us to medium. When we start descending, we will set the local QNH 9083. We are still on standard. Uh, if I do it right now, it will mess up the altitude reading and ATC will not be happy about it. So we will keep it like that and continue on our course and wait on ATC to instruct us or clear us for the approach. So that's the first thing we will hear. We will be first clear for approach and then we will be then clear for landing and we will report established on final. Alright, we can drop the range to 20, I think we'll keep it like this. The way the radar makes it a little bit hard to see. We are still not picking the ILS signal. But, as you see here, when we reach Golf Mike 454, we should initiate the descent again. Now we are at VNAV level. And we should maybe set 3500 this time and arm it. Alright, that should do it. That's our final altitude that we need to descend for our approach. Uh, 
when we start the descent between air, we will immediately open the speed window and start slowing the aircraft down after that last prey point at 10,000 and get ready for our approach. If we don't do this early, if we don't maintain and control our speed before the final fix, we will probably overshoot the ILS and will not be able to land the aircraft. So that's really important in this aircraft and it is, in my experience, not easy or not fast to slow down. Uh, maybe the airframe is uh, not quite draggy. Still no signal from the ILS, so I'm not sure when we will start picking it up. Hopefully before the fire initial fix we should receive the signal and the DME reading. But what is waiting for us is to wait until we clear that restriction and we will drop the speed to uh, to 200 and extend the slats immediately and we will keep reducing the speed to extend the flaps and before the initial fix I am planning to get down to 180 knots and uh, flaps 15 so that's what the plan is and we can maybe keep the flaps at 11 or slats we'll see how that plays out anyway still waiting for that 10,000 restriction to clear. Two more late points and we should be done. Uh, six miles to the first one and then maybe another three miles to the other and we should be clear of the restriction. And as you see, luckily the weather is uh, not quite around the airport but to the side so when we make this turn we should clear the weather hopefully if that's not continuing and have a better visibility for our landing. Right. It probably makes sense to put the terrain on. We kind of know what the weather looks like. Uh, we can wait a little bit more until we make the turn, put the, the, put the terrain so that it will uh, uh, give us a little bit more a clear view of where we are at. 3 miles to go and then another 3 probably. And we don't have any speed restrictions whatsoever. Uh, 220 knots is what we have and it's a mandatory 220 knots at INSU at 5000 so maybe we will keep the VNAV until INSU and plan our descent from there to 3500 because that's a very short distance and we need to uh, uh, descend a little bit faster so we'll see how all this plays out but it will get very easy doing landing so if I go silent that's why let's sink the heading bug one more time or we can actually go to the final approach course and set the heading to our final approach course because we will eventually get there when we make the turns so we will keep the heading back like that and we are waiting to clear the restriction and just shy of three miles to go And the QNH will probably help us when we start the descent and set the QNH. I think we cleared that restriction almost. One mile. It wouldn't be an issue to start the descent now for the next restriction of 5000. So we will select we now descent. It's still not descending, it should now. Okay, we are now descending down. And as I said, we will set the QNH now. 
I'm not sure why, why gear lights are coming on. I hope we don't end up with having a landing gear problem or failure. That will make it a lot more interesting. But, uh, what happened? Okay, let's set that to 83 again. I accidentally hit the B key by hoping it would synchronize everything, but it didn't, so we will just do it manually. So we are coming down to 5000 now. We have 14 miles to go, so that should be enough to descend. We are on profile, so everything is looking good for now. In passing the insole, we will immediately start descending to 3500 and open the speed window right up to that. Let's turn on our landing lights and put the seatbelt signs to on to inform our passengers and secure the cabin. Um, let's see if there's an announcement that we can make. Nope, not really. Okay, we started to pick up the ILS signal 25 miles, which is great. So that's the final approach. And we have an announcement, PA announcement. And we are coming down to 5000. All is looking good now. As I say, waiting for Insu to start to descend to green air. And then immediately set the open the speed line. One thousand five hundred almost to go. We are looking good on profile. We can check the pressurization system to make sure it is. Yep, cabin is descending slowly, so all looking good there. Um, we can do the approach checklist now. Cabin signs are on. Fuel system is set, altimeters and bugs are set, and the checklist completed. Also, the Thinner call... Niner 17, you are 21 nautical miles south of Garden Room Airport. Cleared for the ILS approach to runway 01 left of Garden Room with the ensuit transition. Cleared for the ILS approach to runway 01 left with the ensuit transition Thinner Niner 17. Right, but I played for the approach. We will report established on final. We should hear another... Uh, communication from ATC telling us to uh, report established but we are almost at 5000 maybe we will keep descending I'm not sure looks like it's not going to level maybe it will uh, but as soon as we clear INSU in 5.5 miles we continue descending Let's see how this plays out. Almost cleared. Inso. Alright, we should keep descending now. And the aircraft should set a vertical speed for us. And we will open the speed window. Drop the speed down to 200 knots and go slats. Slats extended. We will keep slowing down to 180 knots. Continue with standing flaps. That should help us get down and give ourselves more time because Zikla here is our final fix, so we need to be at 3500 by that waypoint. 
We are seeing the localizer and ILS. So let's arm the localizer now. And let's arm the ILS too. So let's just stay on localizer first. After capturing the localizer, we will uh, arm the ILS. Alright. Four towns and then a bar restriction. We maintained or managed to meet that restriction too. Speed is looking good. We are slowing down. Finner Niner 17 QNH is Niner 83 at Garter Moon Contact Tower on 118 Decimal 3. Have a okay. nice day. We are handed off to the tower. We can increase the descent rate a little bit to get. Localizer is captured, yeah, yeah. let's arm the ILS. Inbound for ILS approach runway zero one left. Finnair Niner 17, good afternoon. Continue ILS to runway zero one left call when established on final. Continue right. ILS approach to runway zero one left will call when established <laughs> on final Finnair Niner 17. Oh, hello, somebody, thank you, Mike. Uh... All right, let's slow down to 160 knots. And go lap speed. Yankee, Mike, the right-hand left onto Bravo, And we capture the glide slope, hopefully. We will drop the landing right. gear. We are at 7.9 miles. And hopefully we will capture the glide slope momentarily. That's what I'm waiting for. Tower rescue 6 vacated, why are we not capturing the glide slope? We are descending, so let's slow down to our approach speed of 134. Drop the landing gear. Both laps 25. Looks like we are having an issue with the ILS capture. Let's arm the auto brakes. And go. Final stage of laps. We are coming back on the profile. I'm not sure why this is not captured. But we are waiting for the visual of the runway. And then we will disconnect the autopilot and land the aircraft. Finnair 9R17 established on final. Finnair Niner 17 winds are 106 at Niner knots cleared to land runway 01 left. Cleared to okay. land runway 01 left, Finnair Niner 17. There's the runway. Puppies are looking good now. Uh, Shall I say that? Line up runway 28, beam echo 2 and waste. Line up 28, beam echo 2 and waste. Interestingly, Morning. we are losing visibility as we get closer, but I'm still seeing the 1, runway lights, so we should be fine. Passing 1000, we will keep Ryan the autopilot on just a little bit more. Three, four, clear, I think it is. Uh, the winds will die off hopefully, it's still uh, 11 knot crosswind, bumping us around, but I think we can now uh, disconnect the autopilot. Camera 68 X-ray, wind 240 degrees, 7 knots, runway... Autopilot disconnected, all the throttle disconnected, and we'll continue ourselves. Trying to maintain and stay on the glide slope. Continue. Dropping low the glide slope. And drifting due to... Okay, we are looking good now. Very challenging winds. 
Slowly cutting the throttles. This is going to be a bit floaty landing, looks like. Okay, we are down. Versors are in. Finnair 917 exit runway when able. Okay, we are going to exit the runway when we are able. Versors are closed. Let's see if we can exit from the next. Speed brakes are in. And we will continue, keep the throttles up and exit or vacate the runway from the next exit. Three, five, X -ray alpha, wind two, four, zero degrees, seven knots, runway two, ice care, take off. Bye -bye. All right. Take off, three, five, X -ray alpha, the brakes cancelled their cells, so we should be fine now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Let's Please turn them off. And keep your seatbelts fastened until the fastened seatbelts are fastened. Stop our two-dollar limit. Exit towards the, towards the gate and stop. And talk to the ATC when we are clear. Okay. Let's take Camera this exit. Three, four, two, line of runway two eight. Full line to runway. Was a challenging landing. Towards the end, uh, not too bad. I need to fly this aircraft more often to get used to it. But we have vacated the runway. Channel three four two, wind two four zero degrees, seven knots, runway two eight. So let's clear stop take here. Off. Bye bye. Clear right, take off. Two eight. Finnair 9017, runway vacated. Finnair 9017, you were garbled. Please say again. Finnair 9017, runway vacated. Finnair 9017, you were garbled. Please say again. Finnair 9017, clear of active. Finnair 9017, contact ground on that one That took us a couple tries. Niner. Enjoy your afternoon. We'll contact ground the ground. One one we can one turn seven. off the landing lights. Three nine Charlie. We can turn off the strobes. Weather radar can come off now. And transponder will stay like that. Ground, good morning. Finnair 9017, request taxi to the gates. You can mess my mind up at the background. Hello. Finnair 9017 taxi to stand okay. 11 via taxiways Mike, Victor, November, Golf, Echo, Kilo. Taxi to stand 11 via taxiways Mike, Victor, November, yeah, to go. Golf, Echo, Kilo, Finnair 9017. Taxi, Alright, we will follow taxi. the taxiways. Number six, uh, Zulu uniform. Mike, Victor, no, November, no, Golf, Echo, and Kilo. We should be on mic when we make this turn. Let's go a little bit more. The nose is too long, so we need to overshoot the turn for the nose gear to keep the main landing gear on the taxiway. And again, it's snowy and raining, and it acts like it blew on the ground. The tarmac is super sticky, I guess, to apply a little bit more throttle to keep the aircraft moving. And when we make this turn, we'll do the after landing checklist. Flaps and slats. I'm a seven more five, you're parking stand ten. They are now retracted. Uh, Roger, stand ten, seven seven Auto brake is off, speed brake lever is seven retracted. Seven Agni confirmed. engine stand ignition stand selector, we will turn it off. It's already off. Pedo and static break. heaters are off. we are not moving okay uh, airfoil and engine anti-ice we can turn them off now uh, ice switch to off uh, we have turn weather radar is off and after landing check is completed we can fire up the apu now one two three four five that should give us the start 
and we can take a look. Yep, that's all right. Let's clear this. And let's keep taxiing to the gates. So we are on mic. And we will take the next left from Mike to Victor. That should be stating Victor. Yes, it is. There we see it. So this next left turn is Victor. And then we'll make a left, a right turn to continue on Victor after the turn here. And keep going. It's like AP is spooling up. We are hearing it. Let's turn and keep the nose gear a little bit overshooting the turn so that we can turn a little bit better and keep the landing gear on the tarmac. This is Victor. We just make the same thing and turn to Victor. Yeah, uh, okay, sir. Um, it happens. And following the tour should take us to November, and that will be our next turn to November, and from November to both Echo and Kilo to our parking position. And we will be parking at gate 11. Let's keep moving. Just a little bit of trouble to keep her rolling down the taxiway. We can go ahead and move the transponder to altitude reporting off. And almost done with the flight. This was a very long video and a very long flight and took me a while in the process of making this video and publishing it to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. I hope this was, and we are getting to November here. This is the turn. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. That's what I was saying. And I was able to at least uh, give you a little bit of more information on how to fly the Mad Dog. Please, if this was valuable to you, consider giving the video a like. Five, five. Thank you, and if you haven't to, uh, subscribed to the one channel, one one it takes a couple eight, seconds zero, to hit five. that subscribe button one, if you one, wish to choose so, do so. And that will be helping me significantly. Alright, this next turn, I think we took the wrong turn there for November. It was probably the, the turn after this. But so be it, we'll fix it. Make this right turn and that should take us to Wolf. And then eventually Echo and Kilo. This should be golf now. I'm gonna add a little bit more trouble. We are moving so slow, and I am tempted to add more trouble to get to the gate a little bit faster. Sorry about the slow taxi, guys, but the snow on the ground is not helping. At this trouble setting, this aircraft should be flying down the taxiway. And next left should be Echo. Can I start for Bravo? Contact 121905. Yes. Now we are here. AP has been running for a while. Let's turn the AP air on as well. And routing is by a Yankee. And we need to make this turn now to echo and slow down. We were a little bit faster than I like. This is where a co pilot becomes very handy when flying with this aircraft. And our parking position is gate 11. 
should be on our left. And it's hard to taxi on snow in Microsoft but Flight Simulator. Uh, 60 kilo to uh, join behind the KLM. See how slow we, we are now. Interesting. Okay, it looks like we have the marshal over okay, there. I'm seeing the marshal, but I am not able to move the aircraft. That is the problem. While we are here, let's turn off the taxi light lights. We don't want to blind the marshaler. And this should be our turn. Slow down. Alan 3 1, cross Yankee 2. Crossing Yankee 2, Yankee 2. It's 11. Making the turn now. Slow down, slow down. We don't want to hit the marshaler. Keep moving. Uh, terrible snow. Jersey 7 Golf Lima. Hello. Taxi via Yankee to Delta 1A. Taxi Yankee to Delta 1A. There we go. Let's set the parking brake. Now we are here. We need to turn this pneumatic crossfeed valves to on. APU is running and we can now shut the engines down. We'll shut the right engine down. And left engine down. And APU is on the bus so we should switch to APU power. And we can turn off the anti-collision light now. And that is about it. So we are here. Let's call the GSX. Thank you. And request the boarding. The boarding requested. Hello, Alpine 35 Delta Bravo. Taxi via Yankee 2. We'll see if the jet will connect properly. Um, why are we not seeing the jet coming? Alright, let's turn the flight mode off. Passengers the boarding starting. Go back to Passengers are how the passengers are deboarding without the jet bay. That is my question. Well, you guys will pretend like we have the jet bay connected. It's always a hit or miss with GSX, unfortunately. But welcome to Gardermoor in Oslo. Yep, thank you. Look at that. Uh, our passengers are Jedi, they are able to walk in the air. Don't see that, guys, I don't want to see it. Alright, now let's clean the aircraft up, turn off the fuel pumps. Turn uh, the other one turned off, so we don't have to worry about this. Parking brake is set, and this is the parking checklist. We can now turn off the galley power. These are the emergency lights. Turn off the passenger signs, windshield anti-ice. And let's go to this view for a second. Uh, we can request external power, but I am willing to stay on APU power for now. While the passengers are deboarding the aircraft, we can also wait a little bit and shut the aircraft down. But this will take a long time, so I'll bring you guys back when it is done. Alright friends, deboarding is completed and we are ready to shut the aircraft down. Let's jump inside and start returning the flight directors off. I have already turned off the ERT. Let's turn the pneumatic crossfeed valves to off. Transponder is off. Speed brakes are stalled. Flaps are in. APU air is turned off. We turn off the packs. 
and we will eventually turn off the APU let's take the APU off the bus turn off the APU and that is pretty much it we should have set the speeds and everything else to their original settings but it should reset when the aircraft powers down let's dim the lights all together and turn the battery off that is the shutdown and we are finished again thanks for being here and thanks for your patience for this long video I'm hoping to see you in another one and if you are interested in seeing an other aircraft for the second time and take a look at that aircraft one more time please leave me a comment and I'll try to uh, list your requests and make that happen. Thanks for being here.